Hey guys, it's Angie. Welcome back to my Skull series. I've decided to resurrect this series and I'm going to start it off with Mr. Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali, one of my favorite painters and actually he loved skulls as well. He's done a lot of imagery, a lot of photo illusions with skulls. He did one with naked women posed as a huge skull. Very interesting. Lots of his paintings have a lot of skull references and things. So if you haven't checked those out, definitely check out his work. It's incredible. Also, this video was inspired by a book that I've been listening to on audible.com, which is an audiobook superstore. Um, you can find this book on their site as well. It's called Dolly and I, and it's kind of an interesting take on Dolly's art dealer. So there's some sketchy things that happen, some underbelly art world things, which is very, very interesting. And I loved it being a fan of Dolly. So if you want to check it out, I'll have a link below and it's going to give you a free download of an audiobook of your choice. I do recommend the Dolly one though, since it's really good. Otherwise, let's get this tutorial started and thanks for watching. I'm going to start this tutorial off by sketching in all the details of the Dolly skull. I'm going to be creating two different eye sockets for this one and all the cheekbones and nostril cavities and all that stuff. So I'm going to sketch that in using a white eyeliner. So for this side, I've kind of drawn in the droopy clock and now I'm going to do an egg on this side. Go ahead and start filling in where you want your nostrils to be. Now that I have the rough outline on there, I'm going to go in with some colors from the Makeup Forever Flash Palette, this dude. And I have custom mixed some colors on my wax palette, which I highly recommend if you like to mix colors. These are some very Dolly-esque colors that I'm going to use. We're going to do a fade down from the blue down into all these browns and yellows. So I'm going to start with the blue at the top of the skull. Now we're going to apply the next color, which is kind of a medium blue. We're going to blend that up into the darker blue. Now we're going to add that even lighter blue. And now I'm adding that lightest blue. I'm going to start applying some of that yellow to the center of my face and then blending it up into the blue. Now I'm going to start adding the medium yellow color. I'm just adding like a golden yellow and blending it up. Before I get too far into the wormhole, I'm going to go ahead and fill in my teeth, again using the white eyeliner. And once the teeth are filled in, you want to go ahead and continue that color scheme and continue the fade down into the brown color. And your fingers are one of your best blending tools with creams like this. I'm going to add a little bit of shading and depth using that brownish orange color. Now you should look straight up crazy. You want to go ahead and start powdering everything. Really press the powder in. I'm going to go ahead and apply eyeshadow primer to my lids and any of the areas that I'm going to be applying cream products to. Now I'm going to apply an eyeshadow base from NYX. This is the white eyeshadow base. I'm just applying a very thin coat of this. Next I'm going to use a color from Saucebox's Etude Palette and it's this cream ivory color. I'm really going to pack that on top of the lid. I'm going to use the light brown in that same palette and create some shading around the edge of the egg. I'm going to take a dark brown eyeshadow and also go around the perimeter of that egg as well. And 
Starting on the other lid and applying that snake space again. And use that ivory eyeshadow to set it again as well. I'm going to use this color from Sugar Pill. It's kind of like a sea foamish green blue. I'm going to start by applying that to half of the clock face. And it's going to fade over into the ivory. I'm going to grab this blue, which is also from Sugar Pill. I don't know the name, but it's kind of a royal blue. And it's going to mix really nicely with that sea foamish green. So I'm going to create a little more depth to the face of the clock. At this point I'm going to use a mustard colored face paint to create the outline of the clock. Now we're just going to fill in the little branch guide that's holding the clock up. At this point, I began to draw all the details, so I'm going into voiceover mode since my brain cannot make or form sentences while I'm painting fine details. And I'm starting off with this elephant guy, and Dolly liked to paint elephants. It was one of his favorite things. Elephants represented kind of a weightlessness to him, so he always painted them with really frail, long legs supporting their weight. Once Mr. Elephant Dude was all set, I started shading everything using a black face paint, kind of watered it down to make it less opaque, and basically just went around all the different areas that need shading, around the face of the clock, around the tree branch, um, anywhere that needs some depth is where I added that face paint. Dolly did like to paint watches a lot and he called them soft watches and a lot of them were kind of dripping off of things like the persistence of memory. It was a clock dripping off an olive branch and um, he had a pretty interesting concept of time. He thought of time as a fluid and it existed differently and varied greatly between each person and the speed in which time passes is kind of a fluid. So that's why a lot of the watches look like they're melting. Speaking of Dolly's symbolism, I also included an egg for this eye socket and eggs to Dolly kind of symbolized rebirth or a previous life, just kind of a renewal of sorts. And I'm just detailing out that egg using a little shading around the outside perimeter and then creating some cracks. And this is where I went into the land of details, which is kind of like the land of Oz, except Salvador Dolly is there. Uh, I lost all track of time at this point, so I'm glad it's documented at least on video. But yeah, I just went in and detailed Mr. Elephant, added some shading around him to make him pop, and then also added detail to the clock face, including the clock hands and the numbers, which are backwards, by the way. Sorry about it. It's time for teeth, and all I did was to fill in my outlines using the flash colors I created previously. Just kind of a light yellow shade, and I did set that with powder. And next, I outlined those teeth with black face paint. With Cocoa Bear eyeshadow from Makeup Geek, I went ahead and added some shading around the teeth and around the mouth area. This is kind of the perfect dolly color, to be quite honest. And I did find using an angled brush helped really make those teeth ridges easier to create. I also applied that Cocoa Bear underneath the teeth as well to create those teeth ridges or teeth sockets. The valley of the teeth, I don't know, what, whatever you want to call it. And here you've lost me to detail end again. Here I am on a shading spree. A skull shading spree nonetheless, but still a shading spree. The time has come to fill in all the negative spaces of the skull using a black face paint. This one is from Snazaroo and I believe it's just called black. And I'm also going to be taking that all over my neck and any areas that I want to conceal. I went back in with a black eyeshadow and shaded all the areas that needed to recede. And now I'm going to add some black ants. Dolly really likes to use ants in a lot of his stuff. They symbolize decay and decomposition. I think he watched ants eat something when he was a little 
kid, which I guess really sticks with you, but he does include them in a lot of his paintings. So they're super simple to do. All you have to do is three black dots and draw in a couple little legs and then do a little white highlight and you have yourself some pretty realistic ants. You can also add like a little bit of a shadow underneath it to make it look more 3D. And to finish off my Dali skull, I'm going to add his famous mustache because you just have to. And I just used an eyeshadow to sketch in where I want it to be and then finished it off with a black face paint. I hope you guys enjoyed this Salvador Dali inspired skull. I love him so much and I want to give him such tribute. Um, I was definitely inspired by him as a little girl. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and join me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.